In the last chapter, we saw that a company will prepare a flex, flexible budget and compare this to their actual results to see how well or how badly they've done over the year compared to their expected or original budget. In this chapter, Variances, we are going to look in more detail at comparing our budgeted results to our actual results for each of the different cost types. But before we get into that, first we are going to look at something called our standard cost card. Now at the start of the year, a company will prepare a standard cost card for each of their products. All they are really doing here is preparing a budgeted cost per unit. So if we ask the question, what is a standard cost? All it is, is a predetermined or budgeted estimated unit cost. So we will look at our budgeted direct material cost per unit, our budgeted direct labour cost per unit, as well as our budgeted overhead charge per unit. And remember, that's going to be based on our budgeted overhead absorption rate that we calculate. So all we are going to do is prepare a standard cost card for each of our products based on this. So at the start of the year, we've set our standard. We know how much we expect to spend in the production of each unit of our product. And to that, we will probably add on some markup or profit margin in order to calculate our standard or budgeted selling price per unit. Now, before we get into calculating our standard cost card, which will be very straightforward, we're just going to quickly consider the different types of standards a company can use when they're going through this standard costing process. Now, there are a number of different standards a company can use. The first one they might use is what we would call an ideal standard. In this case, they, the company is looking at how much do they expect each unit of their product to cost Assuming that there are no inefficiencies in the process, so there's no idle time amongst our labour force, there's no defects in our um, finished goods. It is a very, very optimistic standard if we use the ideal standard, although it's not the worst thing in the world to try and achieve a perfectly efficient production process. So our ideal standard is based on a perfect standard, so no inefficiencies in the process. Now we've said that it's not the worst thing to try and aim for perfection and get as close to that as you possibly can, but it might be a bit demotivating for our staff within the organisation. They've been set a standard or a target that realistically they are unlikely to ever achieve, even if they're the most skilled staff in the world. An attainable standard is one which improves upon existing standards but still takes into account the fact that there are probably going to always be some inefficiencies in the process. So an attainable standard improves 
on current standards. but still allows for minor inefficiencies in the process. So when we set an attainable standard, what we are saying is, well look, we want to improve on maybe what happened with last year's results, but we still acknowledge that there will always be some element of inefficiencies in any production process. The next standard we could use is current standard. All this is, is looking at what are our uh, current standard costs per unit and trying to achieve the same thing again in the coming year. So while it might be quite a realistic standard because it's based on existing results, it doesn't really motivate us or push us to improve on our existing processes. So current standard is just based on current conditions. And the final standard we might use is a basic or historic standard. This just means our standard cost per unit remains unchanged over a longer period of time. So year on year, we just keep the same standard cost card for each of our products. We don't try and improve on our existing inefficiencies. So our standard is unaltered over a long period of time. Okay, so they are the four different standards a company might use when preparing their standard cost card for each of their products. What we want to look at next is how we actually prepare our standard cost card. So let's have a look at an exercise. Okay, for this company, we're told that each calistamon uses two kilograms of material Q at a standard cost of 30 pounds per kilogram. So this is our standard cost information for our direct materials. We're also told that each calistamon uses six hours of labor at 10 pounds per hour. Our variable overheads have a standard cost of 15 pounds per labor hour. Our fixed production overheads are 20,000 and we have budgeted production of 500 units. And then we're told that the company adds a standard profit of £100 to cost to establish selling price. So, we want to prepare our standard cost card. So we're going to look at what is our standard cost for materials, what is our standard cost for labour, what is our standard cost for our variable overheads, and finally, our standard cost for our fixed overheads. Let's get to it then. So our standard cost card. Beginning then with our direct materials. We said for each unit of our product, we're going to use two kilograms of material at a standard cost of 30 pounds per kilogram. So our total standard cost of direct materials per unit will be 60 pounds. Our next cost we want to look at is our direct labor.
and our standard per unit is six hours of direct labour at a cost of £10 per hour. So again, per unit, our standard direct labour cost will be £60. The next thing we have is our variable overheads. So let's remind ourselves in the question, we are told that the variable overheads have a standard cost of £15 per labour hour. So our standard variable overhead cost per unit will be our six labour hours again, multiplied by our variable overhead cost per hour, £15, which gives us a total of 90. We also need to consider our fixed overheads. And I think we're going to have to do a little bit of a calculation here. Let's look back at the question. So we are told that the company has fixed production overheads of 20,000 and is budgeting to produce 500 units. So we need to quickly work out what is our standard fixed overhead charge per unit, which will just be our budgeted fixed overhead cost divided by our budgeted activity. All right then? So our fixed overhead standard cost per unit will be 20,000 divided by our budgeted activity of 500. And we get 40 pounds. And that's all our standard costs per unit done. So we just want to add them up then to calculate our total standard cost per unit. So we have 60 plus 60 plus 90 plus 40. If you put them into your calculator, you should get 250 pounds. And that is our standard cost per unit. Remember, there's one last little thing we need to do. We were given one final piece of information in the question. We were told that a standard profit of 100 pounds is added to cost to determine the selling price. All right then, this should be very straightforward. Our standard profit is 100 pounds. We'll add this on to calculate our standard selling price per unit. So £350. And that's our standard cost card complete. Now, at the start of the year then, we have completed our standard cost card. At the end of the year, we want to look at our actual results look at the number of units we've produced and calculate for each of our different cost types have we done more or less than the original standard we set at the start of the year. So has each unit cost us more or less than the standard we set? When we go through this control procedure of comparing our actual results to our standard results, we are going to calculate the differences between the two. And the differences between our actual results and our standard results are called variances. So what is a variance? A variance is the difference 
between our standard cost and the actual cost. When we calculate our variances, we are going to see we can have either favorable variances, which means we've done better than we expected, or an adverse variance, which means we have not done as well as we expected. We'll see that a favorable variance occurs when actual results are better than we expected, resulting in higher profits than we had originally budgeted for. So favorable variances occur when actual results are better than our standard, which will result in an increase in our profits. The flip side of that then is our adverse variance. We'll see that an adverse variance occurs when our actual results are worse than our standard results, which will mean a decrease in our profits.